more than 180 ksi four inch thick or eight inch thick material i think it's like eight inch thick material yeah you can buy the steel and you can weld it but you gotta really know what you're doing and you're gonna have to put the whole thing in an oven to preheat it to 600 degrees pull it out the welders are going to be welding next to a huge massive tons of steel at 600 degrees fahrenheit it's like welding on an oven they used it in the keel of the uh, america's cup yacht this was about 10 years ago 15 years ago probably yeah an america's cup yacht it's keel beam they had used hy-130 which was what the navy wanted to use for submarines but they they built one and they went out and tested it and it bent okay 130 ksi like four feet wide eight inches thick a lot of force on those things a lot of a lot of sail area you concentrate it all in a bending moment with a big key not when i say keel is it's actually a the piece that sticks down it's the it's the it's not the rudder but it's the the centerpiece and you want a bunch of weight in the bottom okay down low uh, in fact they used to put lead in the bottoms of the ships even though you're trying to make them lightweight they put lead in so the thing wouldn't tip over okay but you only put it in the bottom you'd like to have a gradient of density high density in the bottom and low density at the top okay anyway so we do know how to weld these steels we can do it if you're will willing to pay the price i often say we can weld almost anything if you're willing to pay the price okay but the price for these really high strength steels gets prohibitive very quickly okay i think we got a little bit of time to talk about fatigue design so if you can pass that out thanks so in fatigue design of weldments the problem that has burned people many times because Santanyana, anybody know who George Santanyana was? He was a philosopher at Harvard. Anyway, Santanyana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Okay? So we have learned that in the design of fatigue of steel structures, the stress for a million cycle life and fatigue, this is in newtons per square meter, uh, millimeter, the stress in the base material or the base material with a hole increases as the ultimate strength of the steel. If you put a weld in there, you get no advantage for high strength steel in fatigue if it's welded. The reason is the weld produces a notch. It's a stress concentration. And it turns out, in terms of fatigue, that notch is going to give you the same fatigue strength whether you're in a low strength steel or whether you're in a high strength steel. Now, General Motors and Ford sort of ran into this in the mid 80s when they were trying to lightweight automobiles. And so they said, oh, we'll save weight on the cars. We'll use high strength steel. And they did, and they spot welded the high strength steel. And they assumed that they would get the same proportional strength increase in the weld as they got as the base metal strength. But you don't. You get, you get the same proportional strength in the solid piece of base metal, but if you have a stress concentration like just a simple hole, you don't get a 45 degree slope. You get something less. That's just the base metal. It's just a stress concentration. You put in a weld where you have an even sharper stress concentration, it turns out there's no advantage. So they designed these things with the same fatigue criteria, but thinner uh, as they'd always used, assuming that the weld strength would increase proportional to the ultimate strength of the steel. And the higher strength steel, they said, oh, well, they just assumed they would get higher strength fatigue strength in the welds. Well, they didn't. And people buying minivans in the mid 80s were unhappy when all of, you know, after a couple of years, they started hearing extra rattles because the spot welds <laughs> were fatiguing. Okay, well, it happens in bridges, it happens in buildings. And so you have to be careful using high strength steels in a fatigue loaded situation that you pay extra attention to the stress concentrations or you put the, the welds in locations 
where the stress is low because in general we just willy-nilly put the welds in the highest stress locations because we expect the welds to be wonderful and they are wonderful I've made a whole career out of it okay anyway um, but what we do if you go to the um, AISC manual I didn't bring it this is the American Institute of Steel Construction these are the civil engineers they basically yes right and when I get to aluminum welds I'm going to show you how to avoid putting the welds at the corners there's lots of ways to do it uh, and we know how to do it you just have to it's a design detail it's not a metallurgical thing the metallurgy kills you and you have to solve it with design okay so there are solutions it's just but those solutions add weight unfortunately I mean the best weld is one that you can just make a simple butt weld and it's like the, you know continuous base material doesn't work in fatigue situations okay and this applies to, to aluminum too you actually have some of these things and this is basically I mean this is a much busier thing than you really want to worry about right now but if I go to the AISC manual they will they have a section on fatigue design okay <clears throat> a whole chapter in the book on design for fatigue structures and they have allowable stresses and you can go to table B3 which is probably on the next page um, and it will tell you what stresses you're allowed as a percentage of the base metal strength and then the weld safety factors and they have loading conditions depending on the number of cycles because you know the feed fatigue curve goes down with the number of cycles so basically the loading condition is where are you on the fatigue curve it's the way the civil engineers do it and then they go and they say um, if I got base material plain material uh, rolled and cleaned it's a stress category A if I have built up members that are made with some welds it could be a B C or an E and I have all kinds of fillet welds mechanically fastened that's like rivets and bolts and things like that and they have different stress conditions and the illustration of those stress conditions is a series of pages it's not a single page it's a series of pages that look like this this is condition one just straight base material here's a here's a i-beam here's a welded built-up member here's another built-up member and these are probably well this is these one two three and four are things that if you look back on the other table it will tell you but you get more and more complex structures where the welds are or where plug welds or slot welds are and these will have different fatigue criteria people have gone out and made these things and broken them they were doing this all the time back in the 1930s through the 1960s today you go and simulate it in a computer if you want okay but in the old days they just go out and make the whole thing get a great big machine vibrate them and see when they broke that's not the way we study fatigue today okay but that's the way they did it that's how these charts came about and we have similar charts whether it's aluminum or steel um, uh, oh here's this is this may be useful this is if I can get it on there this is the allowable stress from the category A B C D E F loading conditions different loading conditions um, and the allowable stress can be 60 KSI for, or the loading condition, I guess, could be you know, 60 KSI. Yeah, it's KSI um, for the base material. But in fact, you may only be allowed for base material category A 36 KSI. So loading condition one may be the maximum capability of the material, and 36 may be the, des actually, 24 is really the design stress for most. Uh, uh, most base metal in a in like the structural welding code but in these other conditions the maximum allowable stress in your design drops depending on the category of the joint and other things it's a whole chapter it gets very messy but essentially we basically reduce and or if you want to say we're increasing the safety factor on these more complex joints by requiring 
a lower stress per, permissible stress level that's how we handle fatigue okay um, there actually is a new thing in the last 10 years called load what is it Simone do you remember load base moment design or something it kind of came out of the Northridge earthquake in, in Southern California in the early 90s yeah. uh, and it's so complex I've tried to look at it a few times and I I need to take a course in it okay Okay. Yeah. Right. It, well, the American Institute of Steel Construction for the last 10 years has preferred this load moment resistant. Okay. It's four, four initials, LMRD or something like that. Um, and like I said, I'm too old. I never learned it as a student. Um, and it, you help me understand that they're actually bringing a safety factor from a design side and from a material side and you see if they match and that's they learned a lot of this by looking at the failures of buildings in the Northridge earthquake uh, a lot of this came out of Northridge but it was coming out of other research and other things uh, the codes don't generally get smaller when we get to aluminum I will show you an example perhaps tomorrow um, of how the welds, um, the welding code, the, the American Welding Society code got simpler in, in aluminum. You worry about things, des joint design details, like the stress concentrations. They call them hard spots in tanks. Um, if you're talking about a ship construction where you have beams going different ways you may have little they call them mouse holes you can see why they call them a mouse hole you cut out so you don't have three welds coming together giving you a lot of triaxial constraint at an intersection of three welds okay so there's lots of little details and games that we we have learned to do uh, because we have learned that some little details are terrible uh, there is a story of the king street bridge in melbourne australia back in the 60s and they had, they just basically had a plate on, the, on top of another plate. So this plate was on a, another plate, and they made the weld all the way around. This might be four inches. This might be 12 inches over here. They just made a fillet weld all the way around. Fatigue crack came along. The bridge fell down. A bunch of cars went in the river. Um, I don't think anybody got killed. I don't remember. But in any case, it's a fairly famous failure. Now you're not allowed to put the closure weld on there you have to leave it open it doesn't really add any strength in fact it tremendously reduces the fatigue strength and if you look at all those geometries I showed you you'll find that one's not allowed or it's category F or whatever <laughs> the stress you can put on that weld is near zip okay so we learn one of the things in, in codes is we learn from our failures so see you tomorrow LRFD? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Load factor resistance design. The title doesn't even make sense. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Thanks. Nice.